We're living in a very, very strange time. This uh, plague, this coronavirus, is something like we've never experienced in our lifetime. Perhaps uh, they did during the Middle Ages with the, with the plague, but they certainly did not have the technology that, that we have today, nor do they have the uh, science that we have today. In many ways, this technology is a tremendous blessing. I wouldn't be here uh, now, and you wouldn't be in your home listening to me if it were not for technology. So this is not to uh, downplay uh, technology. But this is uh, important insofar as this is not the way it's supposed to be. We are supposed to be gathered together as a church community. And that's why it's so important for us to have the churches reopen as soon as possible. That means respecting the laws regarding quarantine, respecting the laws, the laws of, of good science. Uh, that means uh, respecting uh, social distancing and so that when the churches do open, they are going to be a, a safe environment. The incarnation means that our humanity, our flesh and blood, shares in the mystical body of Christ. And therefore, we have to come together as a community, not just for mass, although that's very, very important, but for also for other events, because we are a community that shares a common bond, our faith in Jesus Christ. And so we cannot let fear rule us and when we finally can say, it looks like we're going to be able to come together again, we must make every effort to do so, to do so in a safe way, and to do so in a way that will help to rebuild, rebuild the church community, rebuild our St. Agnes and churches everywhere, Catholic and Protestant and synagogues. And I will also say mosques. Now, we are dealing now in uh, a virtual world. Virtual, I guess the best explanation we can say it's, um, well, it's a half world. It's, it's really, it's make believe in a lot of ways. And we can't live in the make believe. We have to leave, live our, our, our faith. We have to live our social life uh, in, in reality, in reality. And so when we live a virtual existence, not just here for religion or church, it also applies to our civil life. We must be able to come together as fellow citizens to discern what is good and what is right. We're not just virtual creatures. We are for real. And therefore we have to come together. We have to rub elbows if that's allowed anymore, we have to rub elbows and uh, discuss things with each other. Enjoy each other's company. Get a laugh. Talk about the issues of the day. Those things are important for civil society. To live a virtual existence does not allow these things to happen. And just on the political scene alone, Many now are talking about virtual campaigns, virtual debates. There is something to be said about pressing the flesh, getting to know the candidates, discussing with fellow citizens on open forum the issues of the day. There is a certain kind of a, a simpatico that builds up, a certain, a certain um, the connection that builds up between people who are supporting a candidate and with people who find that they have common values, common interests, common goals, and have a connection with the candidate that they choose. That's why, once again, we cannot continue to live in this virtual reality. Somebody said to me, Father, you know, it's like living the Truman Show. That's the make-believe world. We can't, 
We can't have that. It's not good for us. And in the long run, it'll do us tremendous, tremendous damage. It will break down our social enterprise. Finally, let me remind you of this. As I said to you earlier, and this is part of our incarnational faith. The media can be very manipulative. We talked about how wonderful this technology is. But you know as well as I do that uh, people live their lives online. They live their lives on on Facebook. They live their lives on Twitter. Oftentimes, we do not get a very good read of our fellow citizens from those sources. Many times, we uh, express ourselves poorly. There is no chance for facial expression or tone of voice. Oftentimes, some of the wrong people get control of this media. We don't know who's real and who's not real sometimes. It's a perfect avenue for evil people to portray their perverted point of view. And it's also a perfect avenue for the crazies out there to promote their point of view. And sometimes people will say things on the internet that they would never say to a fellow human being in person. And so we can find ourselves terribly confused and disoriented and misguided by uh, the internet technology. This is something we have to be very, very careful for. This technology, as good as it is, it can deny us of our human dignity, deny us our religious freedom, and it can deny us our civil rights because we have to rely on the people that control this technology to get our information, and we don't have the opportunity to be discerning and to discuss this with our fellow citizens. And so today, uh, I strongly encourage you to be a people of faith. Be a people of faith. Uh, and faith means that, yeah, we're part of the incarnation. God redeemed us, flesh and blood, Jesus Christ. We are flesh and blood. We're called to interact with one another in good and healthy and wholesome way. But we have to remember that we do not live in a virtual world. If we do, it is unhealthy for us emotionally. It is unhealthy for us spiritually. It is damaging to our personal freedoms. The wrong people ever get control of the medium that we're using to get our information, just think of the dystopia, the perverted world that we would live in. And so I ask you to pray to Almighty God that uh, we learn how to handle this plague in such a way that we can once again reestablish our communities, our churches, our civic organizations, our political, our political encounters, and our encounters with one another. Because we are an incarnational people, it requires that we be present to one another and not fear each other. Oftentimes, because of media hype, we are now afraid of each other. I end by saying to you something that the late Pope John Paul said many times. Be not afraid. We must be wise, but we must not be afraid. God love you.